Yeah, I think it's just like I mean the Newfoundland accent I know is kind of very kind of, uh, Irish. Very much, but you don't. There are not that many Newfoundland Newfoundlanders out and about, I guess. Because exactly, you don't find you don't many Newfies. Um, the Newfies are their own subculture, um, but they sound incredibly Irish. Um, especially when you find old people from Newfoundland, they sound so Irish. <laughs> Dejan says, up. "Fuck off! I live in New Brunswick." <laughs> yeah, so you know I'm right. <laughs> You know firsthand that, that I'm right. He knows that you're right about that. Exactly. <laughs> I heard that as roofies, says Nebula. No, newfies. Newfies. That's, newfies, that's the that's the endearing term from for Newfoundlanders. Oh, we need a large platform for this. And nobody here says a boot. I disagree with you. <laughs> However, in fairness, the other islands say it more than you do. <laughs> And Jetstream says, no, fuck you for living in New Brunswick. I really like what the chat has become. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you can hear my dog singing I, her song. I do. It's a beautiful song. Jeez, this is her hunger song. My my ah. dog is, the one emote that I have is of a picture of my dog. And it's. What does your dog her. look like? Um, is anybody in his chat that is a subscriber for mine? You can. Put the emote. Uh, the I, I have Jetstream in here. Jetstream sub to you, right? Yep. Yeah, Jetstream, do his emote of the dog. Yeah. Oh. Give, uh, him, a, give him a little hunger dog. There we go. Aw, oh, it looks like a little dog. Yeah, she's a she's a Shih Tzu-ish dog. So Small I don't really know anything lady. about dogs, but I think dogs are wonderful. I was a cat family my whole life growing up, and I love cats to death. Uh, however, like we were the crazy cat fam family. Like at, <laughs> at our peak, we had like six cats at a time. Um, but we took really good care of our cats always. So it's weird to me right now. The last few years of my life have been my only time not having pets. Yeah. Uh, but it's just because we live in a bit of a small place now that I live with my wife and the cats would sometimes get in the way of recordings. So I do, we just, has, just haven't gotten a cat. We won't until we get a, like a proper full on house. So, uh, yeah. So I'm the trying Canadian to find discourse I is real, says uh, Captain Otter Spotter. I got a new platform, but I can't figure out what printer Maria. prints it. I guess it's the small printer, which we don't have right now. Hold on. Can you explain can to me how this medium wind turbine catches any wind? What do you mean? How does it catch the wind? This is this is a real type of wind turbine. It's, uh, is it's it? basically, this is basically the curve of the thing is yeah. basically like the wing of a plane. And so it starts really? spinning because of the same way that a plane gets into the air. That's just so weird to me because, like, I thought it would have, like, a, you know, like, a big cloth sheet or something to catch the wind. Yeah, no, it works on the same principle as, like, a, the wing of a plane. Huh, that is absolutely fascinating. I had no idea that uh, that was a kind of wind turbine. Yeah, they don't, they're, they're one of those ones that, like, still needs some work before they'll be, you'll start seeing them in the real world very much. But that's like people talk about them. They, they're ideally better than regular wind turbines because they have one less movement, one less joint, you know, because the one wind turbine, you're coming in horizontally and then you're turning it into a vertically, if that makes sense. Can't I, really. I, I very vaguely understand, <laughs> but I also think my inability to picture might be uh, kneecapping this. Yeah. Oh, right, so this um, this power cell that we found earlier that I just put on the ground over here, what is this for? Um, you see the, the the yellow in the middle of your backpack? The, like, s uh, spline yes. of your backpack? So that's your power level, and it mm -hmm. hasn't come into play much yet because it yeah. doesn't really... When I make tethers and stuff, it goes down, but it goes right back yeah. up. And until oh, you have yeah. mods on, your, on your, um, your terraforming tool, your digging doesn't take power, but once you have mods, it actually starts drawing power. Um, okay. And so that is like the power cell is like a, a just a quick shot of power, basically. Okay. Also, uh, thank you for following LFCC, uh, Luke, Jasper, Jasper, sorry, in Kikaharu. Welcome to the vlog. Hope you enjoyed the stream. All right. Let's make us some more platforms oh, here. Someone's asking if anybody knows when the next update will come to Xbox. Apparently, there's there's some problems with the frame rate on the <coughs> Xbox version. <laughs> Uh, I don't know much about the game. I'm new to it today. Uh, Archer, do you know anything about the Xbox version? I'm, I know nothing about the Xbox version. All right. 
Uh, sorry, a lot of those things. H Z X. I know that those things have to go like those updates are always slower on the consoles because they have to go through like this like longer term approval process and stuff. Yeah, I remember that being a really big problem in the early days of Payday Two when a lot of people complain that Payday Two ver- uh, console versions are always way behind, but it's because both Sony and Microsoft had these really weird requirements for updates and they charge companies to push through an update. It's very strange to me. Um, you ever played Payday 2? No, I never have. I used to be a big Payday 2 up or a big Payday 2 YouTuber and streamer um, many years ago and I love that game to death. It's I'm not a huge FPS guy in general, but it's also like an action RPG and it's a bank heist game and it is so fucking well done. It is such a fun game and it's a stealth game like it's so many wonderful things all put together that it's got a very wide appeal because of it. Good sense of humor to it. Ah, it's just a fun game. I gotta get back to it. Yeah. Good music. Right, I'm trying to trying to find other things that we can work on here. Jetstream says the problem with multi-stream is that the chat scrolls to the top every time you switch back to the other chat. That's weird. Um Hopefully that won't be an issue forever. There is a update that Twitch is doing right now called Squad Streams, where it's basically multi-Twitch but built into Twitch itself. And right now I am able to do it because it's in like a beta thing and it's partner only and I'm a partner on Twitch. Uh, However, you can't invite anybody who is not a partner right now so far as I know. Maybe there's an opt-in. I don't know, but Archer is not a partner. I keep almost saying subscriber. A partner (laughs) right now, so he can't try that right now but at some point i believe it'll be public for everybody other oh, rover seat takes plastic joe i won't be able to do your rover seat experiment because we don't oh, have yeah. access to plastic right now oh thanks for following uh kphzx i i feel like i need to start calling you something different because that name is incredibly <laughs> awkward to say uh, sonar turbine battery so is battery for storing extra power uh yes yeah, so I'm guessing so that, that's for like if the wind stops or if uh, if the the sun goes down. Yeah. You think maybe uh, I should research that? Oh, it needs lithium. Do we have lithium? We don't currently know. Mm. I think we have to actually go off planet for lithium. Hmm. You think looking? maybe we should start researching towards that, or do we not have what we need? Um, I'm not sure. I, I was in the. I lost track of my train of thought here. Hang on. Soil centrifuge, that's what I was going to do. It's probably a large print. I'm sorry, I was trying to get us a a soil centrifuge up so that we can Mm. get compound and stuff easier. Tractor, aluminium. Yeah, we don't have that. Nope, not a large print. Must be medium. I just realized that there's other tabs of the research thing that have more information. Yeah, it's arranged by like small, medium, and large kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I just started looking at those. Extra large storage, steel and iron. Well, we definitely don't have that. We have a lot of uh, bites built up. Yeah, I just used some to make, um, to get the soil centrifuge, which I'm about to make if I have the compound for it, which doesn't look like I do, so we're going to have to go grab it. But it'll make it easier. uh, Marinari is saying that the game has gotten so much more stuff since the last time she saw it. Did it have a big update? This game, I mean, from if you, if the last time they saw it was when early access started, then there's been a lot of changes. Because like mm. I played the, I played when early access first started, and there was like, you know, you, you were off planet inside of an hour, and now it's oh. like a lot more going on. Okay, um, um, is it still early access? Nope, nope, it's 1.0. Okay, actually, we're we're on like 1.0.3 or something like that now. I know it's not. It is, it is technically time, but you're gonna have to wait a little bit. <laughs> How long would it take you to feed your dog? Well, she needs to go out too, so. Oh, okay. Be. She's fine. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I refer to she. I refer to her having a uh, doggy. I call it her doggy alarm clock. That goes off to let her know that it's time to go to get food. Ah. That's why I, I call her hunger dog on the stream, because she uh. She often ends the stream by starting her song. Ooh, this person's friend who plays on Xbox, his friend would host a world and he'd maybe get 10 f- uh, frames per second if he's lucky. Yikes. And he said that uh, the, they've got 200 megabit per second. 
uh, connection, so it's not just like bad internet. It must be something with the game. That's odd. Hmm. That sucks. Um, what was I gonna say? I forget. Do you play any Paradox Interactive games? I uh, sort of. I've done. Um, I did a series on Surviving Mars, and okay. I did, which isn't you know a first party, but it's published by Paradox. Yeah, yeah. I've played a little bit of that before. I I played a bunch of Stellaris. Stellaris is a lot of fun. Have you played any of the recent updates? They did some major, major, like, complete restructuring of the game updates again. Yeah, I haven't touched it since they did the updates, but I've watched other people play it. <laughs> yeah, they changed the whole population and building system. I'm And the resources, actually. I was completely fine with the previous system, but I also enjoy the new system. I'm honestly not sure why they changed it. Um, it doesn't feel any better or worse than the previous system to me. Well, maybe a little bit better. Um, but, uh, it's, uh, the new system's cool. Um, you need to play Crusader Kings 2 sometime, though, because that game is yeah, wonderful. Yeah, those games are very intimidating to me, uh, just because, of, like, I've watched other people play them, and I'm like, I've spent some time watching, and I still don't really understand what's happening. I have the, I believe it's the top result for, t um, tutorials for Hearts of Iron 4, and I think it's like second from top result for tutorials on a, on Crusader Kings 2. And I'd love to play either of those with you if you ever want to. Or um, Europe, or Europe Universalis 4, although I'm not quite as good as at that one. Yeah. Uh, just because multiplayer on those games are really fun. And they're they're surprisingly easy to teach. Like, if you want the grand strategy games that are first party from Paradox, that's the easiest one to learn. By far, Hearts of Iron 4. Hearts of Iron 4, you could learn the basics of how to play that game in like two hours yeah so the way the soil centrifuge works is your little soil can canister that's on your back you put in that upper circle and then on the controls you can choose what you want to sort of refine out of the soil so i'm getting us some graphite right now because we don't have any okay but. just stream is saying you should do a series teaching Chromie Lenard how to play Crusader Kings 2 or Hearts of Iron 4. It's funny you bring that up, Jetstream, because I've actually been talking with Amphibian about possibly doing something like that. We could always do three people with that. <laughs> could be fun. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'd have to get a hold of the game, though. I don't have it. Uh, it goes on sale for free, often, um, where you just pick it up for free and you keep it forever, and it's just the base game. However, mm -hmm. Paradox is wonderful. Uh, you have all the DLC of the host. So if I'm hosting the multiplayer session, you have every DLC in the game because Paradox gives all of them to me for free. Oh, nice. So, yeah, it's pretty wonderful. In fact, I need to go email them after this and ask for Imperator Rome because they're handing it out now, and you always have to ask. So I got to go email Troy, who I think hates me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's this guy called Troy. Uh, he's one of the guys that you can email about. Uh, he's one of the guys who works at Paradise you email who sends out keys for games and stuff. Mm -hmm. And Troy is infamous for incredibly dry responses to everybody. And so everybody has given up on trying to befriend Troy in any way, except me. I will send Troy a marathon email every time where I'm talking like, ah, oh, this series is going really well. Thanks for sending me that that DLC. Like, it's a lot of fun. We had this really wacky thing happen on Crusader Kings 2 the other day. <laughs> how, how have you been? Like, what, what's going on with you? And like, I, I'm also like requesting this DLC. I have really big plans for it on this day. The response, a, co a day later, I get a copy and paste response where he says absolutely nothing about my story, nothing about himself, doesn't give a fuck about me. He learned to stop giving me anything to talk about <laughs> long ago because I will give him a marathon email. It's beautiful. Well, he would like me then. I'm always very, very straight to the point with, with the... Uh with the uh, press people. I was like, you guys are probably busy, so I'm not going to waste your time. Nope. Every single time I try and make conversation, I am really uh, courteous and nice. I was about the other day. And that is why I have made multiple friends now who are like genuine friends who happen to be press people for companies. Now, that doesn't help me anyway on a business side because they were already sending me a key, but that's not why I'm doing it. I just like making friends. Yeah. In fact, I, I might be doing a, a um, Civilization VI stream at some point with someone who happens to be a uh, happens to be a PR person for Iceberg Interactive, just because that's how I happen to meet them. Which games is Iceberg? I don't. I can't. Um, uh, Oriental Empires, which is okay. a fantastic strategy game in, that is like a Chinese historical strategy game 
that they sent me way back before it was ever publicly released. And I've, I have I hate that I've played it so little on my show because it's actually a very fun game. Yeah. So did you find something down there? Because I just got an achievement. Just... No, I, I don't think so. I killed a plant. I don't know if that... Uh, oh, I got an achievement for the soil centrifuge finishing up. Uh, graphite. It, yeah. All right, well, we have some graphite. Yeah, it's not that useful right at this moment because we don't have it researched yet, but um, there is a thing called the packager that you can build with graphite that lets you turn large resources into little little um, packages that you can put on your back. It's very helpful when you're out like wandering oh, yeah. the wilderness and you're finding lots of those like like you know when we found that size two wind turbine and I just had to carry it home because I couldn't put it on my back. Mm -hmm. You can use the packager to to make it small enough that you can stick it on your back kind of thing. Thanks for following, uh, Dennis. Welcome to the flock. Hope you enjoy the stream. <clears throat> All right, I'm coming down. I was just continuing our, our, our tunnel. Oh, hey, Jetstream says uh, Oriental Empires is on sale right now for on a 75% off discount. Yeah, if there anyone wants go. to go grab it, grab it now. I'm getting all turned around here. All right. ah, got yourself a beacon so you can find your way yeah. back up. <laughs> yep. Uh, it only took one quartz, and I can just get some more quartz while I'm here. Oop, uh, getting stuck. Need some surfer music when MDB slides down. Oh yeah. Surfing is like the, the sliding is super fun. Especially when you get a really long tunnel going. I had a nice... Um, in order to get to the, the the bottom of the planet, though, you have to do switchbacks. Or else you, uh, you'll eventually do, like I said, and you sort of come out on the... You go, you end up going up again. Ah, if yeah. If you don't do yeah. switchbacks. And so I had developed, like, little half pipes on my switchbacks so that I could continue sliding all the way down. <laughs> Surf to the center of the planet. I'm happy that other people in the chat are also recommending Oriental Empires. That is a really fun game. It helps, too, that I'm just a sucker for Chinese culture, so I'm probably really biased <laughs> that I really like the setting, but still. How do I know how many tethers I have left? Um, Wherever you have them on your thing you can actually see them they're like physically there so i'm making another one right now because i know they went oh yes. okay i can actually see the number of them that's cool okay four eight thirteen no four eight twelve it's uh eleven eleven, 11. yeah because four <laughs> plus four plus three that's how i do it that's that's yeah. easy to me is if i break into really small numbers i can do it yeah, I was, well, that's what I was trying to do because I can see it as a line of four, line of three, line of four, but I just can't. I'm just not good at math. So, <laughs> so putting I the numbers together. I guess I'm was, just smarter than you. It's all right. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Uh, Sassarus asks, is it possible to go through the center of the planet? Uh, there is a thing in the in the middle of the planet, but you can you can get pretty close. It takes a long time, though. We're not getting there today. What time is it right now? How the fuck is it 4 p.m.? Yeah, I probably need to go relatively soon. My dog That's... is tol tolerating it at the moment, <laughs> but she's going to start. That's fine. Getting... We got like two hours from when we started actually playing, playing. Yep. That was f this game's fun. I like this game. I'd be up for doing more of this. Yeah, it's fun. I, I really enjoy this. I wonder, one of the things I wonder is I wonder if you can join on the game that I already had going. I would assume, um, from the way I joined, I kind of get the feeling that there's no difference between a multiplayer save and a single player, kind of like Factorio. Yeah. Here, let, let's find out, since we need to close up shop here anyways. Let's actually, well, okay. let's go save first, and then... Sure. Uh, just oh, to be sure. Speaking of Factorio, have you played uh, Satisfactory? I haven't played either Factorio or Satisfactory, to be honest. Oh, okay. I think you'd probably like both of them. Uh, I did a few episodes recently on Satisfactory with Truth, and uh, we're definitely going to do more because it was a lot of fun. I kind of think of it as, like, 
what if No Man's Sky was good and it was also Factorio? It's really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it check it like just click on one of my videos if it skipped ten minutes or twenty minutes in, and just watch like five minutes and you'll know if you like it or not. Cool. All right, I'm gonna. I jump mean, back. watch all of them in their entirety <laughs> to know if you like it or not. Yeah, yeah. You, I'm sure you have an hour and a half to just do nothing but watch my shit. <laughs> all right, I'm quitting back to the main menu, which means you'll yes. probably get bumped. I, I just got I just got bumped to the loading solar system screen. And I, I'll load up my single player game and we'll see if you can get in. I can give you a quick little yeah. tour around some of the stuff before we. Awesome. I'm really looking forward to making the thumbnails for this just because I get to make them even more bright and colorful. <laughs> Man, I was remaking a Terraria thumbnail the other day and the game looks so gray by comparison to the one that I made. It's yeah. crazy. Like if you've ever messed with the saturation of something really heavily, like individual colors and like spent like 10 minutes working on it until like the colors you want to pop really pop and it's nice and then you just turn them off it looks like what was previously like a colorful screenshot you took is like grayscale by comparison it's so weird to look at yeah all right i'm i'm here although i remember just remember that i'm actually on the moon and i don't have the ability to go home right now i don't think that's uh, fine i'm loading in right now but you can at least see the moon i did see the moon well you can see the moon closer up okay I've always wanted to see the moon closer. Up. <laughs> that's why that's why you stand in the middle of Clock Town and you wait three days staring at the moon as it crashes into you. It's a Majora's Mask joke. No, I, get, I, I, I probably I know. don't need to specify that because even if you don't know much about Majora's Mask, you know the fucking moon. Yeah, I, I know that I know that bit. Yeah, that's like the famous thing is the terrifying moon that cl crashes into Clock Town in three days. God, that's a cool game. <laughs> Is it having trouble loading confirm. in? Uh, it just takes a little while, but I'm, I'm like launching off now, which I think mm -hmm. is masking a loading screen. Yeah. Oh, I can actually see you in the distance. That's interesting. Oh, that's cool. Oh, here it come. I'm just wondering if it's going to drop you on the planet instead of where I am. I'm on the planet. Yep, there you go. All right. <laughs> well, I'm on the moon, and I don't really have, I don't think, the materials to make a, or maybe I do. Hang on, let's see. Anything you need me to uh, do while I'm down here? I just need to see if I can make solid fuel, fuel thruster. I need one aluminum. Do I have aluminum up here? I got a lot down here. My, my fuel thruster burnt out last time I came up here, so I needed, like... I got a beach ball down here. You need me to throw that up? <laughs> The zebra block? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Let me just start taking all of your important resources and throwing them in a pit and burying them. <laughs> all right. I don't have I don't have aluminum available, unfortunately. So I look can't around. come back. I can't come back. I don't even see where you are. I'm trying to look Actually, for them. Oh I... no! I I see your icon. It's really far away, though. It's on the moon. <laughs> to me, it looks like you're on a mountain top, but it's I think it's the clouds doing that. All right. Well, I can't I, get back because I don't know where the I don't know where to get aluminum quickly to out here. So I agree with Sasser. Someone should make a mod for this game where the moon becomes a mint. Sorry, it's my whole chat room has been obsessed with mints for the last month or two, because okay, you're an old PC gamer. You probably have played the King's Quest games. Um, oh yeah. I love the King's Quest games, and I let's play King's Quest Six on the show because my friends had never played them, and I love those games, and I am obsessed with the line. I took a mint and we couldn't stop making jokes about that and the undertow killing us the entire game. <laughs> and so if you see in my chat now, we have an emote that's the mint from King's Quest six and everyone's been making, I took a mint puns for months. It's incredible. Nice. Everything is undertow and yes, Prince Alexander. And I took a mint and oh, it's wonderful. Then I have a button on my soundboard for my computer that's the voice clip from King's Quest V of, ah, life-giving water, nectar of the gods, of which I've been saying every time I take a drink of water on my show for like nine years. And only a very few number of people are getting it. Almost no one has played that game, but most people <laughs> know where it's from because they ask me a lot. And so I say all the time, King's Quest V, drinking water in the desert. All right. Well, I'm going to close up shop now because... Yes, this, this was a... A solid two-hour session. You, if I and had the exact access to uh, aluminum, I could come back, but I don't. 
that that's fine. We'll, we'll I, survive. I had just recently gotten to the moon when I closed up the last session of this, and so. Well, this was a fun um, stream. Mint dry bread. I like it. I can't believe I've never seen someone do MDB in the chat, but with the M being a mint. Because the mint picture in King's Quest 6 has an M on it. The funniest fucking thing was on my Discord server where Truth, uh, po he said, Maria, as in the line that Shadow the Hedgehog says over and over, but the M is a mint. And that was the funniest thing in the world to me. <laughs> Jesus, such a stupid joke. I love it. Uh, I hope everybody right. enjoyed the stream. Yeah, I hope everyone had a good time. And I'll, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for playing with me. Thanks for coming, everybody. Have a nice day. And if you're on my stream, uh, I will raid you guys over to Aldrahill. He's playing Imperator Rome. I know a lot of you guys are Paradox Interactive fans, so you'd probably be into what he's playing right now because that's the new game coming out that I've got to go harass Troy about later. Thank you everybody for watching. Until next time, have a nice day.